Texas Truck Works is your go-to truck customizer. From mild-to-wild lift kits, custom wheels, and steering and handling enhancements to the best personal and commercial wraps, Texas Truck Works delivers. Let Texas Truck Works founder Scott Stevens help you get the most out of your truck or Jeep. Texas Truck Works has decades of customizing experience, including power adders and complete engine swaps. Let the Texas Truck Works team design an upgrade plan that fits your budget. Get truck attitude today at TexasTruckWorks.com. Hello, everybody. This is the award-winning car talk show in real time, your weekly go-to all things automotive place, along with Mike out of this world, Mars, and King Conrad DeLong. I'm Don Armstrong. So glad that you could join us on this Saturday. It is a beautiful Saturday after all we've been through here this week around the upper Texas Gulf Coast and especially over in Louisiana. It's been quite a quite a ride. So Pr- praying week. for everybody over in uh, East Texas and West Louisiana. You know, what that, a yeah, that Lake Charles area and got to fly over all of that. Uh, all the way from Cameron through Lake Charles and uh, a couple of other places, Hackberry and uh, Iowa, Louisiana, really total devastation through there. And it's really sad to see. And the power is still out. It's going to be a while before uh, the power gets up from what I saw. And, uh, and actually, some of the power outages over there, over into the Beaumont area where Mars lives. Because that's it, where was, the power comes from is Louisiana. Over there. Right. Yeah, we still got a lot of people out of power. In fact, my mother's still, her house, when I was there last night, was still out of power. Yeah. And uh, I'm hoping it comes on today. But there's, I think the last report I saw, there was still like about 80,000 people out. Hey, I want to give a shout out to the Cajun Navy. Uh, they were the ones who came and got me out of my house for Harvey. And I know they've been extremely active over in the Lake Charles area, um, getting people safe. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's quite a crew. And uh, We so had them on the show some time ago. We did. Yeah, we did. Uh, we were talking about, I believe, uh, uh, Ram trucks and right. all of that sort of stuff. But anyway, so uh, we have with us now a dear friend of mine, I am glad to say, uh, and she might not think of me that way, but <laughs> whatever the case may be. may not na- claim you. That's right. Well, most people don't. Gina Child knowles and she's with Houston Motorsports Park, and more specifically with the Texas Short Track Racing Series, and she is the promoter out at Houston Motorsports Park. Jeannie, you look lovely this morning, and we thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Good morning, guys. Good morning to you. So I wanted to uh, really bring everybody in and up to date with uh, Houston Motorsports Park and the Texas Short Track Racing Series. You know, uh, I, first of all, let, let's talk about next weekend's event. Things have been going, I think, uh, from a fan's point of view, and although that I am kind of involved with you now out there at the at the park uh, during race nights, um, I think that things are going relatively well. I mean, you know, you've only really ca- taken hold of this the past few years and, you know, managed to build a, an actual following out there, and I think that the racers are pretty satisfied. you got a core uh, group of folks that come out there, and you tell me how are things going. And you put on a hell of a show. Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's going, it's going good. I took it over July of last year, but I've always helped them, right? You know, before. So, you know, if COVID didn't happen, I think we would be in a um, much better, in place. a better place. Yes, of yes, course, right. definitely. Right. But this is racing. Uh, it's a, it's a roller coaster. I've been on it my whole life, and it's up and down. And um, we're just happy. To have people coming out and experiencing it that haven't that hasn't been a race fan before, and boy, you can tell them when they see it. They always stop me and say, "Oh my gosh, thanks! This is awesome! Thanks for uh, you know letting us know about it." I love I love that. That is the paycheck. Well, right I ha- I have to tell you that so. Gina's, I did not know Gina, clearly, uh, but I saw her grandfather race at Meyer Speedway. And uh, so I have always, always, in, well, since I was about 12 or 13, uh, been in touch with the Child family as a fan. And now, thank goodness that she's kind of brought me into the fold. So I know her husband and daughter and the rest of her family. And, and it, it, it's really nice to be connected that way because I've always been a circle track racing fan, and especially when it comes to asphalt racing. And uh, so I kind of grew up on half mile asphalt at Meyer Speedway. The track out of Houston Motorsports Park is a three eighths mile, which I think is really perfect. So the speeds aren't incredibly yeah. fast, but they're it, fast enough. They're fast enough. Well, the coolest thing about this is it's local. 
you know, the Texas short track racing is it's local people that are there and you bring other people in from yeah. out of the area, but this isn't some big, huge, all these people that don't live in the area right. come in here and race. You're talking to people who live in and around the Houston area that come to race. So, and it's real family oriented, you know, bring the Definitely. kids, you know, you get to wander through the, the pit area. Heck, you, you might actually get a chance to help some of them because they're all looking for a little bit of help if you can bring a little skill. Well, and the other for thing sure. is she, she's taken it and elevated as well because now you've got the association with NASCAR. So it's not uh, it's not just a and bunch of guys pit, yeah. getting together, but, but it's actually a race and everybody feels good. You just elevated the level of it. Right. You know what's funny to me? It's always been like that. It's uh, always been uh, the center of our household and our, our lives. And, and so you don't realize that until you get older and, and you get away from it and you go to school and you, you know, get married and have kids. I, I didn't go around it for a little bit. And when I went back to the first race, uh, it was just an odd feeling. The minute I opened the car door and stepped out <laughs> and heard the cars yes. on the track, it was like... It was weird. It's so you know. It's Music to your ears. Yeah. Well, it's just a lot. Yes. It's just a lot different. It's like going, to me. It's like going to a baseball game or a football game or mm -hmm. something. Like that. You can watch it on TV, and you probably can get a better shot at, at what's going on. But to go there and experience, yes. to feel it yes. while you're there, while watching it and hearing it. Yes. Well, and you know the and, other thing is too, Gina. If I can interrupt here, and that yeah. is the fact that that there's you've got a core group of racers that come yeah. out there, and if you go to the races. You're going to have your favorites. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, your favorite pitcher, your your third baseman, whatever it is. And you're going to root for them and you get really into it. And you're going to start seeing some of the same guys win every week. Now, that's not to say it's a runaway race. They don't win right. by, you know, a whole lap or something. But these guys are consistently good. And there's one particular guy that races two or three different categories of car. And sometimes on the same night. And, uh, and I think his name is Chris, if I'm not mistaken. Casey. Casey, Casey Smith. Casey Smith. Yes. And this guy yes. has got a great personality, all-American guy. Yeah. And, you know, he's not braggadocious or anything, very humble and very thankful for what he's got. But, you know, these car owners, not necessarily the car owners drive these cars. Right, right, right. And so they hi right. that he's a hired gun, so to speak. And oh. this guy rocks it. Well, and, and you yep. know. One of the hired guns you had last uh, race was uh, the pace car driver, our own <laughs> Don Armstrong. You know, you could tell when when his confidence would would come out because you heard it uh, through the throttle when he hit, hit it. On that, that was <laughs> he just liked being in first. No, yeah, that, that, that's it. Well, I'll tell you what, it, it, it's such a, a, a different experience because, you know, most fans don't get to listen to the race director. And the race director is kind of like the conductor because uh -huh. it, it's, it's not Gina. She's got people that does this for her, uh, uh -huh. a couple in particular, and uh, they're very good at what they do. They know what they're doing. They know when to put a car back to the back of the field. They tell me to get the pace car out there. You're going to go right behind this car. We need to pick up the pace a little bit, slow it down. It, it's a it's get a, off the track pace car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, 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 but, but you know, most people most people don't understand or know yeah. any of that yeah. because and, it's a very coordinated dance. Well, and it he is, is yes. the, the lead of that coordination because yeah. he's getting input from people telling him, "No, here's the position. Here's the position." Here or she. Or, or she, and then yep, they have to right. communicate that to the track and then to the drivers and then to the pace car about the when, where you have to be out there and what you're supposed to be doing. And you were a rookie at it, but you did a wonderful job. Well, thank you. Uh, and I, he I, wants to do it again, Gina. Well, she, yeah. <laughs> I figured, I kind of thought that. Yeah, well, um, I mean, what, what the nice thing about it was I had a place to sit in air conditioning while the race was going on. <laughs> and then as soon as the race was over with, I got to drive around to do my post-race winter interview you out there at the start finish line so it all kind of worked out you were such a star Don. well i don't know about that See, but, and if you start doing it on yes. a regular basis we'll get you some stickers to put on your car we'll put some big number yes. on the side of the corvette we can put big white numbers on it you know what and we're not letting you put any stickers on my car now maybe. gina maybe but not <laughs> you sir so gina how how has it been to uh, orchestrate this is this your first uh, go at trying to be a pro uh, actually 
actually being a successful promoter. I mean, you clearly have had help uh, with a, a lot of people that support you, but I, I know that this has been kind of a learning experience for you because you've dealt with COVID. You got to deal with racers and attitudes every week. You've got an entire staff of people that actually help you put on this race. I mean, there's it's not just opening the gate and taking the tickets. Well, and you have to coordinate the feed help that you get. You know, whether it was Don or I understand you're doing a food truck event out there this uh, mm -hmm. Labor Day weekend. So you know, you're 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 doing not just the standard stuff that's going on. You're always bringing in new ideas, new things, things to get the fans excited out uh, out yeah. in the stands as well you know it's it's funny i've always you know been a racer from a family standpoint and when your dad does it it's one thing and when your brothers my brother did it uh always did it of course all of them do but one of them in particular wanted to go in and ask her so i started uh doing marketing stuff for him and it was a whole new you really had to look at what the fan watches and what they see and what they like and and i and i did that for my brother and my son and it, it get, put things into perspective when i when i st potentially stepped into this role is when i had heard that it probably was going to go away again and i had been involved for you know the first two years of it and i had stepped away because my photography business was booming and so when i heard that i thought well i'm gonna go watch so i shot a wedding and I went to the track and I thought I'd catch the last 30 minutes and it was already almost 10 o'clock and they ran till midnight, oh, wow. almost midnight. And it, it was kind of disheartening because it's just where racing goes when you don't have people keeping it together. You, let's say you have you five guys with one race car and five other guys with a similar race car, but they all want to race. Well, you've got a lot of guys like that with a you know five cars and five cars and five cars and you don't want to let them all race back to back because that the fans wouldn't come to watch it they would but it would be the the racing fans it'd be the fans that would be there anyway so you don't make money uh from it and that's where they were i i could see where they had gone and they were trying to accommodate that's the hardest part about my job is having to tell a racer he can't race especially wow. when you're you're doing the you're you're promoting the last asphalt the only asphalt short track in Texas. I don't like that part of this job. But, well, but you you have to represent it. You have to present it to the fans. It's it's in the presentation is what I feel like. And and the support that you get because you've got NASCAR involved right. as a local yep. track. You've also got Advanced Auto Parts heavily involved yep. and I believe yes. they're the ones who are going to be there the as the title sponsor for your yes. uh, September 5th race. Yep, definitely. Tell us a little I, bit about I that. Have done it. I couldn't have done it without Advance. Advance has been on board with racing at HMP uh, for about three years. Since it first started, the second race when they reopened the track. And uh, those guys are fantastic. Uh, Mike Cooper, who is my contact, he owned a racetrack previously. So he understands the struggles. And a lot of the times he'll just call me up and he'll know what we're struggling with and he'll help me out. So it's fantastic having that backing. And then on top of that, uh, this year they took, you know, they became the title sponsor of NASCAR Weekly Series. So it's the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series. That means since we're NASCAR sanctioned, our guys are a part of that weekly series. So it's a good it, it helps. Well, it helps on both sides of it. But, you know, the other thing, yep. too, Gina, and I wanted to make this clear is, is that you talked about, you know, making money. Let's face it. I mean, there's not a, a big payday for you here because yep. all of the funds that you have go to the track, mm -hmm. the people that help run the event, and the yep. racers because the racers wouldn't be there if there wasn't some kind of purse. And let's face that. The purse is you know, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yep. what does that buy? Maybe a can of gas. That's right. That's right. It's a, it's a delicate dance that you have to dance. And if you take money from it in the start, it will not make it. There's uh, everybody in racing needs money. There's no ifs, ands, buts about that. So you have to find the other dollars. Everybody wants a piece of a dollar and they want to split it, split it, split it. You got to go look for more and uh, they don't do that. And that is what, uh, you know, NASCAR being, you know, being a sanctioned track that helps me with that find different, a new level of sponsors 
that you have to have to build something solid. Right, right, but right. no, there's no money in it right now. And it might look like it, but this is the hard part. But I guarantee you, if I last, I'm going to be making money. Well, you're going to last because <laughs> I, I know for a fact that you've got support. I mean, I yep, do what definitely. I can to help you. And uh, yep. I, I know that you've got a lot of other people out there, mm -hmm. like myself, that are trying to, because of the love of the sport. I mean, That's I'm, right. I'm not yep. doing this to make money. I'm doing it because I love the sport. I love her, but I, I love the sport. And well, you go back to the 60s. With uh, yeah. did you have racing. to bring that up? Well, I was going to say the fifties, but <laughs> well, actually, actually, it was it probably was the, closer. It actually was the fifties is when my first exposure was at Play uh, Park. No, actually, it wasn't. Uh, I was in Wisconsin at the time. Oh. And it was at the Milwaukee Mile okay. and the Wisconsin oh, State wow. Fair. And that was where I uh, – and it was dirt back then. That's and I had you never got seen – your first exposure? Yeah, the first exposure. And I was, you know, I don't know, seven, eight years old maybe. But uh, then, then, man, it just it, – it stuck with me and it stuck with me all these years. And then when we moved to Westbury, Meyer Speedway was just within walking distance. And you could so, hear them run. Yeah, you could hear them on Saturday night. And so it's always been a part of my soul. And as much as yeah. I love drag racing, I love all kinds of racing. But this is where my heart is in circle track asphalt. And I've, I know that I'm not by myself. There's a lot of, of us you, out there. I feel exactly the same way. Exactly. No, no other type of racing is, is does the same thing to me. This is totally different. And especially when it gets to a local level and you can get, right. you get uh -huh. to know you, you've got your favorite drivers that you pull for. And, yep. you know, everybody wants the winner, but there's all also, that dark side, you're going to go, yeah, get up there. That guy is in last place, and here he comes roaring around, and it's a race to the finish. Well, it's like me, because when yeah. I go, I'm always rooting for that guy driving that teal-colored Oldsmobile Cutlass <laughs> front-wheel drive car. I'm, I'm rooting him on, and he just needs more power and better brakes. Well, Gina, we're going to You know what? Uh -huh. you, you would like do you, I know you've been off the track, but Greg Davidson is one of our racers, yes. uh, a veteran racer. He always was the Oldsmobile guy. You would love. No, him. I need. I need. <laughs> I need to chat with him one time. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, a hundred percent. You know, if he could still run it, he would. Well, Gina, but he was the only the loner yep. of the track. So, Gina, we we're gonna uh, break away. We got some other things we need to take care of. Okay. We're gonna get back with you in about forty five minutes at the bottom of the hour. So, I want you to hang in there with us, and we'll be back with you soon. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Gina Child Knowles, and she is with the, he, uh, the Texas Short Track Racing Series up at Houston Motorsports Park. Big event next Saturday night, and we invite everybody to come on out. In Will Time continues after a quick break, and we're going to have uh, Conrad's car clinic. 911, what's your emergency? <laughs> There's a train that just hit a car. Sir, what is your location? Uh, uh, Look uh, around for a street sign, it's sir. 8th and Orchard. 8th and Orchard. Okay, very good. 8th and Orchard. Sir, help is on the way. Why, why would he do that? What, the train still doesn't stop. You have to get there now. At a railway crossing, even if the engineer sees you and hits the brakes, it can take a mile for the train to stop. And for you, that's too late. Stop. Trains can't. Paid for by NHTSA. You're on the In Wheel Time Car Show. Thanks for riding with us today. We really appreciate it. Time now for Conrad's Car Clinic. Once a week, Conrad uh, delves into what he knows best, and that is the inner workings of an automobile and engines and that sort of stuff. I spent a lot of years with uh, the factory as a factory Gen rep. General Motors, 25 years with General Motors, and um, I just celebrated my 11th year with BG Products. Way to go. So uh, my, he, my son laughs at me because he, he's a millennial and he hasn't worked for anybody for more than three years. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, how did you do that for 25 years? Well, at least he's not living in the basement. No, he's not. He's he lives on his own. That's good. I don't, I don't give him any So money. what do you got on the car clinic Well, today? you and I talked earlier in the week that uh, a, a good topic for this weekend may be, you know, doing a little inspection of a vehicle, a used vehicle for flood damage. Yep. With all of this that's, you know, going to be coming out of uh, Lake Charles. Or wind damage for that matter. Right. But all of this that's going to be coming out of Lake Charles, you know, 
is there an opportunity for somebody to dump some flooded cars into our market? And right now, absolutely there is because the used car market is hungry for inventory. Uh, the new car market's hungry for inventory too, but we need to look at, you know, what's going on the used car. So some simple things you can do is, you know, check the vehicle's title, uh, you know, check with Carfax, Experian, the Motor Vehicle Title Information System, the National Insurance C Crime Bureau VIN check, you know, so those are all easy things. If you have the 17-digit VIN, you can just punch it in and get some information on the vehicle. And I would highly recommend you do that on anything before you buy. Now, Carfax and Experian, there's a fee involved, but uh, the Crime Bureau and the Vehicle Title Information System, th those are free. But even even a small fee for a Carfax or something like that, if you're looking at a twenty thousand dollar purchase, that's going to be minor to it, save yourself. It's a good investment to make. Absolutely, it is. Examine the interior and the engine compartment for evidence of water. You know, you can always see a debris line inside the car. Um, check the, the radiator front, back, and the AC condenser front and back to see if there's water, a lot of leaves packed in, some mud packed in. Like a water in. line or something. Yeah, it's exactly what it is, a water line. So also look inside the door hinge area because that's an area that's real difficult to clean and what you're looking for is is that water line that mud line a lot of uh, leaves and pine needles and stuff all packed in there. It's a pretty good indication. Um, check for recently shampooed or replaced carpets. You know, if you're looking at a car that's five years old and has brand new carpet in it. Red um, flag. Yeah, it could be a red flag. You know, you want to you want to look a little bit further. Uh, I would recommend you pull the door seals out, the, the door sills out, the little trim piece little that holds plates, the carpet yeah. in place on the side. You know, re relatively easy to get out, lift up the carpet, look underneath, look and see if it's got fresh carpet and fresh padding underneath because that's always an indication Stick that Stick your hand in there, pull your hand out and smell. It's it, always it, a it, good... It's, good. Like a, it's like a one-year-old's diaper. It'll smell the same. <laughs> Sorry, I, you know, I, I did go there. You know, look yeah. under the carpeting for water residue, stains, um, evaporated water. Um, I have all of that in my mind now, and it will for the be rest there for of the, the rest of the day. Thank you, you know, inspect the interior for rust under the carpeting. Look underneath the dash for rust. Look underneath the seats. You know, one of the things is, you know, if the, if the cars had water in it and the car stayed closed up, all of that stuff begins to corrode pretty quick. So, um, you know, check on for rust on the screws in the console area, uh, in the dash, on the door, you know, it shouldn't be, none of that should be there. Look for mud or grit in the crevices in the, uh, under the hood around the engine, behind the power steering pump, behind the alternator, up in the intake manifold. There shouldn't be a whole lot of junk up there, but sometimes, you know, they, they can't clean all that out, so it's a pretty good indicator. Uh, inspect the electrical system for rusted components and water residue or suspicious corrosion. The biggest problem today with a car that has been in deep water or has had water in it is not the carpet, the seats, um, all of that. It's the electrical systems. All of these electrical systems are designed to absorb some splash, but they're not designed for submersion in the water. And once that happens, you are, especially a lot of these modules, they are going to fail in a relatively short period of time. And that corrosion starts turning all kinds of lights on and things quit working in your car and is unbelievably expensive to fix at some point in the future. So have, it's worth taking it to an expert to do a pre-purchase inspection on it. And if the seller is unwilling to do that, walk. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in, in kind of going with the flow in that, um, Hurricane Laura left behind major destruction this week, as you have probably wow. seen on television in Louisiana. And auto dealers on Friday still trying to assess the damage over there. The Associated Press said a full assessment could take days. Laura was responsible for at least six deaths over there. Uh, Louisiana Automobile Dealers Association President Will Green told Auto News in an email Friday that he's continuing to check in with dealers throughout the state as they survey the damage <clears throat> at their stores. Uh, he says, there are still many without power and water in the areas most affected, he wrote. He said, uh, it is too early to tell how long the dealerships will remain closed. Lake Charles dealer Philip Tarver said Thursday there's no electricity or water available in the area about 50 miles north of Cameron where the hurricane made landfall. 
Beaumont dealer Mitchell Dale closed Wednesday and Thursday and moved inventory to higher ground. He was pleasantly surprised, he said, to find minimal damage at his store on Thursday. He said, uh, when you look at the damage that the storm did, he said, we could possibly be hit. I would do the same thing next time. He said, it was the right thing to do knowing the information we knew. Uh, Dale reopened McCree Ford for normal business hours yesterday morning. He said, we're sorry for the folks that got hit, but grateful. Well, that we did. and Mike had posted the picture of the uh, Chrysler store there in Nieder. Well, that was in Port Arthur. It was Port actually Arthur. the Port Arthur store. They got wiped out whenever Harvey came through. They literally, I was shocked to pull up there. Uh, I was going to Lowe's to get some more supplies, and their lot was Look, absolutely it was empty. empty. It was like the dealership was gone. I don't know where they put them all. I mean, they're used, they're pre-owned, everything was gone. Well, they're protecting their investment. Oh, absolutely. I think, like he said, it was the right thing to do, particularly down in Port Arthur with what we were being told. Hey, uh, uh, believe this or not, Tesla factory got cyber attacked. And we're going to have that story coming up right after a quick break here on the In Wheel Time Car Show. Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. <laughs> and now a speech. I just want to say that friendship is about heart. Heart and brain. Who's with me? Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. And my brain is saying, when it's time to go home, somebody call me a ride. Love that guy. Me too. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. <laughs> A social distancing tip. While the CDC urges you to avoid close contact, like hugging or shaking hands, there are other non-physical ways to say hello. Wave, wink, use sign language, salute, smile, give the peace sign, throw up an air high five, do jazz hands. Remember, stay a minimum of six feet or two arms length away from others and stay home if you can. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. You know that everybody loves your hand gestures. <laughs> yeah, I, I, may be, I may be alone for a long time. <laughs> Especially after seeing that, that's for sure. Uh, hey, got something ugly or nice to say about our show? Perhaps you're still ticked off about that crappy torque wrench warranty <laughs> that Craftsman lied to you about. Uh, we want to hear about it, too, and share it with all of our friends. All you have to do is shoot us an email with the gripe information to info at inwheeltime.com. Time now to look at some of the stories making uh, news headlines this week. Elon Musk confirmed that the Tesla Incorporated factory uh, in Nevada was the target of a thwarted cyber attack. Uh, Musk tweeted on Thursday that this was a serious attack in response to a report that Tesla Roddy, a report by Tesla Roddy, apparently some news service, that an employee at the Gigafactory near Reno had helped the FBI to derail the planned attack by a Russian man who was arrested August 22nd and charged with conspiracy Good. to intentionally damage a protected computer. Justice Department said in a statement Tuesday that Igor Egorovich... Igor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> had tried to recruit an employee at an unidentified company to introduce malware to the company's computer system. The malware was intended to extract data from the network and to seek ransom from the company, according to the Justice Department. This guy uh, promised the employee he'd get a million dollars after the malware was introduced into the computer network. Busted. They need to hang him by his feet out in the Arizona desert. I couldn't agree until more. Until he dries up and withers away. I'm so sick of this baloney of people just attacking other people just for grins. Those damned Russians, you know? <laughs> remember the movie The Russians Are Coming? The Russians yes, Are Coming? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and if you're too I young, remember Dr. Strangelove riding, the, yeah. <laughs> riding it down. <laughs> that was a bad analogy, I'm sure. <laughs> No, riding the bomb down? Yeah. 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 What, was, what was the actor's name? Famous actor. Um, yeah. I, I don't recall. <laughs> George will tell us here. George is on Will. He's, he's Will, always looking. Will Chills or something like no, that? No, you it know, wasn't, it wasn't that. But it, uh, yeah, famous actor. And what it was. You, you've memory. seen him in a dozen, 50 oh, yeah, movies. He, comes, yeah. he was in The Getaway with Steve McQueen and Ally McGraw. And he just yeah, and there were and lots of westerns. Around. And I thought this was a pretty interesting story, too. General Motors has temporarily enlisted <laughs> salaried volunteers 
to build mid-sized pickups at its plant in Wentzville, Missouri, until absenteeism improves or enough temporary workers uh, and transfers arrive. Uh, GM spokesman Jim Kane said the number of salaried workers online at Wentzville varies by week. Some weeks the total has exceeded two dozen, he said. Coronavirus cases continue to climb in Missouri. The state has reported 35,000 new cases in the last month, according to John Hopkins. So, um, you so know. salaried workers are going to go build your vehicle in Wentzville well, as opposed to the uh, the trained union workers. Yeah, and the union's pretty ticked <laughs> off, as you can imagine. Of course they are. Well, they're ticked off about everything. <clears throat> yeah. and uh, I, I've got a couple of union stories here when we get to them later. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. So we're going to, as a matter oh, of fact, goodness. you know what? We're just going to go right into it, and we're going to start uh, hour two. You ready? I'm ready. Oh, you're such a tease. Let's get All after it. You. Are you ready? Ride them, cowboy. All right. Well, here we Yeehaw. go. Yeehaw.